Hi, I'm Chris Blakeman, and today I'm going to talk about bag vacuums versus bagless vacuums. A lot of people ask me why buy a bagged vacuum. Uh, I like to buy bagless vacuums because I don't have to buy bags. Uh, bagless vacuums are easier because I don't have to deal with a bag. And so today I just want to make a video about the advantages of a bag vacuum versus a bag bagless vacuum. Uh, it's a question um, and kind of a conversation to have with customers almost on a daily basis in our vacuum cleaner store. And I think that you'll find after you watch this video, it'll make more sense as to why when you buy in a higher price range, when you buy a vacuum cleaner in a higher price range, it's a better quality vacuum. It makes more sense to buy a bag unit. Okay, so the first thing I want to explain is how a vacuum cleaner motor works. This is a vacuum cleaner motor. What happens with a vacuum cleaner motor is air travels through the intake of the motor and then comes out the outtake of the motor. As the air comes out the outtake of the motor, it comes out the exhaust on the vacuum cleaner. Okay, so the air that flows into the motor in a flow-through motor, which is a vacuum cleaner motor, a bypass system, you're going to have pieces of debris or small amounts of dirt and particulates that are coming up off of the floor. All the dirt that's on the floor, um, all the um, small like uh, dust mites, um, anything you vacuum up, the debris and stuff is going to come up through the system and get trapped in the vacuum and then the air passes through the motor. So to the extent that the motor is protected is how long it's going to last. Okay, the more motor protection you have, the longer it lasts. There's two different things about motor protection in a vacuum cleaner. There's how much debris you can stop from going through the motor then also how much airflow you can allow to go through without the motor being restricted because it's pulling air and pushing it out. So if it doesn't have enough air to breathe for the air to come through, the motor starts working harder. It spins faster and faster. As it spins faster and faster, it gets hotter. And these electronic, these, uh, the motor armature, the copper windings here get really hot and the motor can burn out. Uh, it can get damaged. The bushing inside here, there's bushings on either side of the motor that also spin. They can get really hot and get damaged. It'll sound funny. It'll get broken. Um, and so what we commonly see a lot are bagless vacuums with bad motors. Because a bagless vacuum, I'm going to show you, the way bagless vacuum motor protection works is the debris comes off of the floor. So the vacuum vacuums up the debris. Okay, and I'm going to take this away so we can see. The, deb the debris then comes up and flows through the system, okay, into the canister, into the intake, into this intake here. This is very common with any bagless vacuum. There's some sort of canister that captures the debris, okay? Once the debris is captured, the air is then going to flow back out through a post motor filter, okay, for final filtration. So, a couple things going on there. We've got the intake filter, a pre-motor filter, filtering the air before it goes through the motor, and a post-motor filter to filter the air as it leaves the vacuum, so it's healthier for you to breathe, okay? In a bagless vacuum, the only thing stopping the debris inside of the canister from traveling through our motor down here is going to be the pre-motor filter, all right? That's it. And so with a bagless vacuum, that pre-motor filter is essential to protecting the motor. In a lot of cases, filter systems that protect motors, like if we look at a filter, you're really only looking at a surface area this big that's capturing debris, okay? That's all that's capturing the debris. Once this surface area becomes restricted with dirt and with debris, like that becomes totally covered, the air can't flow through and the motor can't breathe. That can cause motor damage, okay? Also, if the filter's not good enough, if it's very porous, especially washable filters that are like a sponge, they actually allow for more dirt to flow through, damage the motor, and then the dirt actually flows through the outtake and you breathe it, okay? Depending on how good that post motor filter is, all right? So this is all that's stopping debris from going through. It's a very small surface area of filtration, okay? Now, the nice thing about a bag and a bag system what we have going on here, and I have a full bag just to talk about that, is that the debris is coming, same thing, the debris is going to come up off of the floor. It's actually going to travel up into the bag first, 
bag captures all the debris, then the air passes through a pre-motor filter. That pre-motor filter then passes, the air then passes through the motor after that, after the bag, after the filter, then out of the outtake, okay? A bag, the surface area, when we're comparing the filtration area here of this to an actual bag, and I'll show you, can you pause it? Yeah. Okay, so here we have a bag, and I've cut this bag open to show the surface area on the inside that's going to capture finite particles and go ahead and take a good look at that get close to it and you can see all the filter area on that bag all the square inches of, of filter area there's a lot more here in the bag on the inside a lot more filter area that's going to go ahead and capture debris versus just this area on a bagless filter okay right right there in the bag so that, that captures so much more fine particulate and protects the motor so much better. It also allows, this allows for more airflow. Once it captures more area there, more debris, to go through that, po that pre-motor filter and then the air travel through the bypass motor and out the exhaust. So what happens is your motor is much more protected with that bagged system. And then when the bag's full, you just go ahead and you throw it away. And then you take a new bag and you just put it on. In fact, these are really nice because you can just pop them onto a latch. There's actually arrows that show you it goes on. You engage this. So you're going to go ahead and line it all up and then lock it into place. And you're ready to vacuum again. Okay? So easy peasy. All right? With a, with a canister, we're going to have to go ahead and take this, find a trash can. We're going to dump it into the trash can. There's going to be a lot of dust everywhere when we go ahead and do that. Put it back together. You know, if you're allergenic, uh, if you have asthma, and you breathe that stuff, it may even cause reactions. Uh, come back, you know, put it back on the vacuum and go back to vacuuming again. And then at some point in time, this needs to be blown out with an air compressor to really continue to get maximum performance. Um, and then on top of that, we're going to have to go ahead and maintain this filter, wash it out, clean it. Um, which in effect actually makes the pores in this bigger by washing it. It's, they're opening the pores, it allows for more dirt to go through, more airflow. That's why we see bad motors on ba bagless vacuums on a regular basis. Almost on a daily basis in our vacuum stores, we see bad uh, bagless vacuums coming with bad motors. Okay, So um, the maintenance is way more involved actually. You're maintaining a filter, you're maintaining a cyclone and a dirt cup system versus throwing away a bag and putting a new one on. If your time's worth anything, that is costing you money right there. Okay, and if your health is worth anything, it's definitely costing you money right there. Um, when the motor burns out and you have to buy a new vacuum, that costs you money right there. Okay, because a lot of people are saying, well, why have to buy bags? That's an expense. Well, a bag, when it's actually full, holds a lot. Okay, this bag here probably has about two and a half, three pounds of debris inside of it. And that's because in a bagged system, what happens is this bag is in a sealed suction chamber. As debris flows into the bag and suction happens over here, it's packing it in. It's packing it in there. So in this, this totally sealed system, uh, when you take that bag out, it's actually, there's a lot more debris inside of here than just in a bagless vacuum. In this bagless unit here, for example, the max fill line is right here. It's only filling up to right there. And then in the middle, this cyclone actually takes up a lot of the space in the middle of this. What actually gets filled up in here is also swirling around. Because it's swirling around, it's not really packing it in like in a bag. So you could probably fill this up a hundred times. And then just, and it would pack into this bag right here, you know, one time. Um, we have people that run their vacuums and get this much debris in two months of use. Sometimes they're changing their bag only once every two months, okay, versus people using bagless vacuums where you're emptying it every time you vacuum, you're emptying that bagless can uh, canister. Um, and you, if your time's worth money, that's costing you money, you know, versus just going and buying a $20 pack of bags, maybe every other month, not even, maybe every three or four months. For some people, once a year, they spend 20 bucks on bags. Um, and over a lifetime investment on a vacuum cleaner, it's, it's pale in comparison to buying a bagless vacuum 
every six months, even every year, even every three years, if you buy a bagless vacuum and you're buying a four or five, six hundred dollar bagless vacuum, you can easily invest that much money in a high quality bag unit that's made in America, that's made in Germany. Um, really good quality vacuum cleaners that will last you for 20 or 30 years and you just change the bag on it. Um, so that's why a bag is cleaner and healthier. It's actually the most affordable way to go um, to protect your vacuum cleaner and get the best performance as well.